You're listening to Scotland 69 AM with me, the Sheriff, and uh, uh, in the jail cell, a rock and blues show. And what a cool track that is from Paul McGilloway, uh, City Lights is called. And I'm absolutely delighted to say that uh, I'm joined uh, uh, from New York by Paul McGilloway himself. Uh, good day, uh, Paul. How are you? Hi, Ron. How's it going? Oh, it's cool. It's cool. Hey, it's uh, how are things across in New York? Pretty good. Pretty good. Hoping to get hoping to get some good weather soon. But listen, thanks for having me on the show. Well, it's a pleasure to nice. pleasure to have you on, Paul. Yeah. Great to be here. Really is. And uh, tell me, you know that uh, we have uh, over the last little while been uh, playing some of your uh, cuts, and uh, City Lights is uh, one which has generated a lot of interest. Uh, from our uh, listeners across the world and uh, is there a story behind that uh, particular cut uh, Paul? That that song that song was probably a long time in the making really um, but it, it, but the, the music itself kind of just came out of nowhere. Um, I don't even remember um, the exact time but it, it just kind of surfaced and, and, and the, the, the chord progression and the, the Motif, the guitar mo- motif, just kind of came all at once, which is um, it happens sometimes, but um, uh, so it's it's very 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 cool, and uh, um, and I certainly uh, like it. But but before we talk about some more of your music, mm-hmm. uh, I think it would be uh, really cool to talk about uh, 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 why uh, an Irishman is uh, in New York, uh, uh, Paul. <laughs> Another one. Another um, one. <laughs> another Irishman. I, I I came here for music. I came here for music. Um, I, I've been in New York for 14 years, um, and I was just following a dream, you know. Growing up um, in Derry, where I'm from, um, I felt the need. I, f- I figured I needed to get out um, to, to do what I wanted to do, unfortunately. And um, so I... I, I, I when I was younger, maybe I started leaving around uh, home when I was like 19, and I go away and I spend a couple of years in France. I spend a little time in England. I even tried America um, in Chicago, and and it didn't work out for me. I ended up going home, but eventually I came back in 2001. Uh, I had a friend here that kind of got me, you know, just kind of somewhere to stay to begin with, and it was purely for the music. I had a few musical influences probably that were based in New York and I wanted that that kind of um, inspiration and you know to soak up the city like a sponge and for it to affect me and to so that when I write you could hear that New York influence yeah and yeah. I, I don't know if it really <laughs> I don't know if it happened but it, it definitely raised the bar in ways coming here and trying to fend for yourself. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll come. We'll come back to that because I've got a number of. I've actually have a. Uh, I've taken a listener's question as well, which I'll uh, give you um, uh, in a little while. But I just wanted to go back to your days in Derry and Northern Ireland, and uh, I think I understand that you had a, a great grandfather uh, who was a renowned uh, traditional Irish fiddler. Is that the case? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, Johnny Graham. John Graham. Um, my mother's grandfather. He he um he was a fiddle player. He was a st- he had um he was a station master, and um, he would hold um, some of the big Donegal kind of jam sessions, and he was never recorded or anything like that. But yeah, I I kind of always hoped that maybe I got a little bit of a little bit of his um his feel in my fingers, you know. Yes, indeed, and. Yeah. Uh, so when was the first time that uh, you saw a guitar around your house? Um, it's it's unclear to me. Um, I think there was. I know that there was one pretty early on. Uh, I'm not sure if it was bought. Uh, it must have been bought really early when I was really young. A wooden guitar, and it was bought for me, even though it was like probably about five times the size of me. Um, and I. The the next thing I rem- I just remember it being kicked around the house, you know. So it was something that you played on as opposed to played almost, you know. But um, I started having a real 
I I was very in, very in, I was raised on my parents' record collection, you know, my father's record collection. So that would be interesting to see what was in there. The Beatles, a lot of the Beatles, Joe Walsh. Oh, cool, um, cool. Ten CC, um, Stevie Wonder, a lot, you know, the, touch their own stones. But um, yeah, Ten CC was actually the band that I picked up on very early on. But uh, the first time I noticed guitar was probably um, was probably Derek and the Dominoes. That was probably that that uh, and Eric Clapton uh, the, guitar the, thing. The famous Layla track, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it was Layla, and uh, you know it was the usual grabbing a, a, a tennis racket and <laughs> you know, rolling around the floor. Uh, and then at some stage. Um, the the guitar for me kept kind of showing up at, at different times in my life as being this kind of little little beacon, you know, this little light kind of calling to me, and I never really picked it. Never, it just kept happening every few years, maybe or something. And then when I was thirteen, um, I got a guitar for Christmas from Santa. <laughs> lovely, and, lovely, cool. I, I never, I never left the dime from that. I kind of picked it up and 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 um, I, you know, I just stuck at it and and I'm still trying to learn the thing. I think it was a candy apple red Stratocaster you that's got from right. Santa Claus, did you? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a, you know, it was a knockoff of a Fender, but it was, it was, um, yeah, it was great. I um, destroyed the thing, <laughs> you know. I actually take thing. I took it apart. I think after having it for a few weeks, because I just I guess I was I, I, want, I, I took it apart because I wanted to see what was inside it. But uh, I still got a touch of that about me. But yeah, so it's been a great friend. It's it's and you know it's taken me all over the place and you know that's okay. why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, that's well. Thank you for that, uh, Paul. And uh, I'm. Um, <clears throat> it's not. It's certainly not second class. Uh, very first class. But uh, I'm trying to get a segue into the uh, uh, second track that we're going to spin on the Rock and Blue show here. And uh, that's a, a cut called Second Class. Uh, is there just before we spin it? Is there any story behind that? Oh, second Class. That's that's like um like an experience that I once had that um it's yeah it, I wrote the I wrote the lyrics to that tune in probably about six minutes <laughs> they just it's just one of those things that just came I had been traveling a bit and uh when I kind of grasped land again I, I just wrote it out in a piece of paper all in one go so that was that one okay well uh, let me let's spin that right now this is uh the uh, very, very cool uh, Paul McGilloway, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and this is uh, a cut called Second Class. <laughs> Uh, Scotland 69 a.m. and you're with the sheriff in the jail cell and uh, also with Paul McGilloway. Uh, uh, which joined me from uh, yeah. New York for uh, uh, this uh, special feature and uh, that was uh, second uh, class, a very very uh, cool cut uh, indeed, uh, Paul. So thank you for that and. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I've got a, a listener question, if I may put it to you. Um, uh, and uh, it's uh, from a lady here in Edinburgh, uh, Brenda, Brenda Gatti, her name is. Hey, uh, and uh, she has uh, asked uh, what your, or who or w is or was your biggest uh, influence or inspiration in music? Oh, I have I have a list. Um, there, there's definitely a few that stand out, you know. Um, but the longer the longer that it's gone on, I feel like nearly everybody has kind of influenced me at this stage um but the when i heard, i heard angus young uh, from acdc um play and and he probably I, I was sitting i was sitting and had the headphones on and i was a friend a friend from school had recorded me on cassette tape 
a live concert. Um, it was the old Bon Scott era stuff, and 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 there's a section where Angus goes out into the crowd and on his own, and he does the one-handed kind of guitar playing thing, and and I just heard the you know I his the way he communicated with the crowd and and just this magic magical playing and i it was right then i think i i, I made up my mind like i said I, after a long concession of little inspirational pushes in the direction of the guitar the uh it was angus i i, I just made up my mind i was like that's that's what i want to be that's what i want to do so it was angus and then he led to jimmy page and then he led to I went back into maybe Peter Green. Um, yes, yes, of course. The, the Delta, I got into Robert Johnson and all those guys, and you know, but um, and then you know the Irish guitar players like um, Rory Gallagher, obviously, and then the great Gary Moore. Yes, yes. So there's there's a there's a ton of them, you know. And they're they're certainly uh, been very influential in many people's lives, uh, uh, Paul. Uh, um, of course, everybody. It's the same usual suspects, you know, for me to. It's to I, I. But the more the more, the older I get, the more I appreciate all the guitar players, you know. I I I, I, I can only but agree, and uh, I have the privilege of spinning a lot of them uh, on the rock and blues yeah. show, and yeah. uh, so I, I wanted to ask you. Uh, thank you for that, and I hope that's. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Brenda. Hope so, Brenda. Oh. Uh, and uh, now, of course, uh, you live in New York City in uh, East Village, uh, uh, Paul. Uh huh. And uh, I guess now, uh, you, uh, would it be fair to describe you as a, a, a gigging guitarist, a, a, yes. a session man at this time? Yeah, that that's kind of um, that's what I that's kind of how I make my living, just um, playing playing guitar in the city. Um, for you know, over the years, with lots of different different bands and singer songwriters and and you know party bands and kind of whatever it takes really, you know, to make a living. And uh, another uh, band that uh, sometimes featured on the rock and blues show, the Sisters of Juras. I think you had I think you had a uh, uh, an eye to eye meeting with them. Yes, that's that's yeah, we met them. They, um, they came to Arlene's Grocery. It's a it's a rock club in the Lower East Side, um, and I've had a I have a the house band there. It's basically like a, an open mic band where the group has like 300 plus songs on a menu on a list, and and you can sing with a band. So it's kind of like it's better than having a machine provide the music. You know, you got absolutely all the experience, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's amazing. Some people, you know, they never they they wanted to play in bands. Maybe growing up, it was an idea, it was a, it was a dream, and they never got a chance. Well, you know, with us, they can come and they can have, you know, a bit of fun. Um, and the girls came; they were there. Yeah, got to see them. Yeah, they told me all about it, and uh, so that was cool. So, uh, some of the uh, uh, you, you you're playing, um, uh, you you take yourself and actually uh, play with some bands, other bands or uh, artists. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, over over the years, right now at the moment, I'm I'm kind of focusing on on doing my own own thing, and and really that's just trying to complete the record because you know after after so many years of playing um, playing around with other musicians and stuff, and you know I've been on the odd record here and there and um, nothing major, but um, you know it was time for me to to kind of finish something my own because I. I had been writing for a long for for yes. years since I was pretty young, but I never really followed through. So it was about time to kind of kind of do that. But I've had some good experiences in New York. I've shared the stage with some pretty amazing musicians, um, you know, Billy Gibbons, um, Sebastian Bach, um, Adam Levine. My goodness, there's a, there's a, there's been a lot of people that that have come through, every, you know. And all di- for all different reasons, and you know, you can find yourself playing with you know friends, or you know, uh, one minute, or you could find yourself on a stage playing with a guy like Billy Gibbons, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. Think about New York, you know. And then I, you know, from one end to the other, and then I launched the 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 new Corvette Stingray, I think in 2012 or 2013. Yeah, 2013. Very cool. Very so you cool. Find, you know, I mean, that's. 
Mm. It's kind of like the rough and tumble these days of being a, a guitarist and trying to make a living that way. You know, it's um, I just I, it's funny. I just seen on Facebook there recently uh, or the other day, um, Brian Johnson from ACDC just before he was signed, I guess, to the band. He did a vacuum cleaner commercial, you know, and yeah. it just it just <laughs> it kind of made me think. You know, because sometimes you can beat yourself up about, you know, your you well, know, the situation you're in, you know, but it's like, you see, you got to take, you got to take what you get, you know. Well, I can tell you that the feedback that I get uh, uh, from our listeners uh, is very, very positive, uh, Paul, and they really enjoy your music and... Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, nice. And talking of which, I have another. Before I ask you about uh, the 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 album that you're completing, and we play another track. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I got another question from a, a, a Jr. Who's a is a, I don't know whether it's female or male, but uh -huh. uh, uh, asking, um, can you ask uh, Paul, please? And I will do right now. What is his favorite guitar to play? My favorite guitar is um is the the Gibson Les Paul. Yeah, the Gibson Les Paul. It's my it's my weapon of choice. And that's uh, is that a gold top or is that just a custom or a standard? I was I was lucky enough um, to to get a, an endorsement deal with Gibson, and um, I wanted to solidify the little you know arrangement that we had. So it's a it's like a standard, like a 1959 standard. Um, it's a great, it's a great guitar, and I got to try a bunch of different ones that day, and it, it was the one that kind of stood out to me. So that's that's I've I've played other Gibsons, but I ended up with the Les Paul. It's got a lot to do with you know the the your influences to like um, Dean and Jimmy Page and these guys used the Les Paul, and just it's the sound is it's it's a special sound. Very good. Well, thank you for that, uh, uh, Paul, and. Uh, so uh, you're, you're putting together this album and uh, uh, we'll come to how people can uh, view you and uh, see you and get in touch with you and listen to you in a minute. Um, but the, uh, this is a cut uh, uh, we're going to spin just very sh shortly called Charlie. Uh, and again, I always ask, uh, was there a story behind that? This, is, this song is about my, uh, a dog I once had, Charlie. <laughs> so this is, this is my, my kind of... Just my just my little nod to the to my pet dog, my friend Charlie. Okay, and uh, so for Charlie, uh, this is and our listeners across the world here in Scotland, 69 a.m. This is uh, Paul McGilloway and Charlie. Check it out. <laughs> Great cut indeed, uh, Charlie by uh, Paul McGilloway, and you're listening to the Sheriff's Rock and Blues Show here in the jail cell, and uh, I'm with, uh, and have been with, uh, Paul McGilloway himself. Uh, that's a really cool track, uh, Paul. I absolutely like it. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very much. Now, uh, uh, talking about the, uh, uh, how people can know a wee bit more about uh, Paul McGilloway, you, I should tell them that uh, they can go to your website, paulmcgilloway.com. I've got that correct, have I? That's right, yeah, paulmcgilloway.com. Uh, and there actually on the website, you can see a picture of Charlie, uh, that, that, right, yeah. that, that <laughs> famous dog. Um, now, if people uh, want to, uh, uh, can they can they download any of your tracks at the moment through the usual things like iTunes, Paul? Yeah, yeah, the music's on iTunes. It's on iTunes. Um, I, I I stick it up on on YouTube as well, and then you know the I have a Facebook page, Paul Anthony McGilloway. Um, but yeah, the paulmcgilloway.com. Yes, and you have a Facebook. Uh, uh, you, you're easy to find on Facebook, and people can uh, follow you there. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, uh, 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 is there um, uh, a, a, a plan for Paul McGilloway uh, just to complete this album, and then uh, what next? Yeah, I want to. I want to finish it, and then see see where see where I'm at with that. You know, if I want to take it take it out on the road, or you know, start doing shows. Um, it obviously, you know, it takes a lot and I just want to make sure that it's something that I, 
that I, that I want to do, that I really want to follow through. The, the main thing for me was to record and to have it, you know. Uh, and do you produce, uh, uh, well, that's my own question, and do you produce your own um, uh, mixes and uh, the final mix, etc.? I don't mix. I don't mix it. Um, I, I'll, I, you know, I pretty much produce the whole thing. Um, and I, I, I work. I mean, I'm, I'm, you. It's great now to be able to do a lot of this, you know, because you have computers and stuff, and the, the technology is just it's incredible. Yeah, I, I can do so much of it at home, and um, um, so I'm doing most of it, most of the work on my own. I, I, I put together like a. Um, songs with with um, drum loops and, and I'll play the bass and I'll even put MIDI strings together and then I'll find musicians that I that I want to work with yes and, yes uh, they'll replace the bits that I you know they'll, they'll just leave me with you know with playing guitar and vocals and they'll replace everything else but it's allowed me to it's it's allowing me to get the job done you know um, so should I be telling uh, the world that uh, they're listening, the record producers that I know that do listen to uh, the, the Jail Cell Rock and Blues show that, uh, uh, or, or, or record companies that uh, we sh they should be signing you up, Paul? Ah, if they... <laughs> we'll do our best for you. They can, they can, they can give us a shout, but um, yeah, it's, I've been working with Michael Tudor. He's been mixing it for me, so it's it's... That makes the difference, kind of like that. I go up to, uh, it's become a ritual, and I'll finish. I'm kind of I'm working this album a track at a time, which is probably unconventional, but it's a way that I can get my head around it. And then I'll take it up at the, you know, go up to Woodstock, where he's just north of Bearsville, I'd say yeah. Woodstock, and we go and we spend a day mixing it, and, you know, I share it, and then on to the next one, you know. So, um, do you have uh, do you have any favourite track uh, that you would like uh, uh, before we uh, uh, finish up uh, here uh, today, Paul? Uh, a favourite track that you would like uh, yeah. me to play, um, and you could we'll dedicate it to all our listeners from you. Yeah, let's hear um, let's let's hear "Oh Well" by Peter Green. Play we're back. Okay, and uh, we'll certainly do that. And uh, so uh, uh, the future is uh, still very bright and um, you're playing um, and uh, that's what is important. Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's, you know, it's a good, it's a good thing to have the guitar and just keep, keep bashing away at it. Get the hang of it one of these days, Ron. Yes, yes. Once you learn the, uh, <laughs> the, the fifth inversions, uh, Paul, well, it will be fine. <laughs> good name for a record absolutely the the so uh coming up to uh i want to thank you uh, uh paul for taking a time out to speak to us here in scotland 69 am in the jail cell it's been a real pleasure to uh meet you and uh let the listeners uh, know the man behind the, the the strings thanks so much for having me on the show ron i really enjoy your show and 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 all the support and it's just fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, well, it's our pleasure. I can tell you, it's our pleasure. The uh, until the sun uh, is the final cut that we're going to uh, play, uh, 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 Paul. Uh -huh. And uh, what uh, what do you say about that track? Until the sun, it's it's um it's just a no. It was an old, I originally wrote it as a like an old kind of Delta Blues song, and. Um, and and then I just I just had a notion to go a wee bit further with that. So it's basically to me it's, it's basically like a like a step step after Ro a Robert Johnson kind of thing. Okay, yeah. cool, yeah. cool, cool indeed. Now let me remind the listeners that to go to www.paulmcgilloway.com and you can uh, have a, a little look at uh, the website there and also to follow uh, Paul on uh, Facebook and. Uh, uh, you can also uh, download his tracks from uh, iTunes. So, uh, Paul, once again, thank you so much uh, for uh, coming you. in via New York, and it's uh, wish we wish you all the very, very best for the future. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for having me. This is Paul McGilloway, very cool indeed, very talented uh, gentleman, uh, and this is a very, very uh, cool track, Until the Sun. <laughs> 